Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing the latest and greatest gaming headset from Astro. This is the A30. It is $230 US, and it's available in white or this navy color. There's also three platforms to choose from. So there's the PC version, the Xbox version, and the PlayStation version. All three versions work wirelessly on PC. If you buy the PlayStation version, it also works wirelessly on PlayStation. And if you buy the Xbox version, it also works wirelessly on Xbox. All, regardless of which version you buy, they all have Bluetooth and they all have an aux input. So if you buy the Xbox variant but want to use this on PlayStation, you have two choices. You can use the aux cable and plug into your DualSense controller, or you can purchase the upgradable or, or additional dongle from Astro. The, I'm not sure on the pricing yet, but that will allow you to pair the same headset to a PlayStation dongle. And now instead of buying two headsets like the A30, you can have one, just change your transmitter out. Now I go really in depth with headset videos and with that being said, they can get kind of long sometimes. So if you only care about a particular section, take a look at the description below. I will have chapters as well as the little play bar, of course. There are a lot of things to cover with this headset, a lot of good things. Um, so I suggest if you have the time, try watching it through. If not, you know how to find the section you're looking for. Now this headset was not sent to me for review. In fact, uh, I actually purchased three of them. I purchased this one through Astro in blue. I purchased a white one on Amazon and a white one on Best Buy because that's what was available. Those still haven't shown up. They kept getting delayed. Looks like next week now. Uh, but I have had this for a few days. Thankfully, this one shipped incredibly fast. Uh, so we were able to do the review. Now, uh, if you like what you see by the end of the review, please don't forget to like and subscribe because uh, in order to work with more companies, they want to see the channel a little bit bigger, of course. So we always appreciate the support there. Otherwise, I will have a link in the description below if you decide this is the right one for you. It's a generic Amazon affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I use that affiliate money to purchase headsets like this so I can keep providing the content that's been helping grow the channel. So with that being said, let's dive in. Now, as far as what you get in the box, obviously the Astro A30, you get the removable mic, which I'll show you more in a moment. You get this awesome case, which is actually kind of a hard reinforced case. It's somewhat flexible. This is perfect for a backpack. And what I like about this case, it's actually a little bit thinner than most gaming headset cases, so it'll fit in uh, most bags pretty easily. Uh, inside, so the interesting thing about this one is um, there's kind of like a cable bowl, so the headset fits inside pretty well. The microphone you do have to remove, I strongly suggest doing that, and then because it's so bendable I can just stuff it in. Uh, but you get the mic, like I said, you get an aux cable, and I do appreciate that their cables are the same color as the headset. They could have just gone with the black cable, and I don't think too many people would have complained because it's kind of expected, uh, but I do want to call out that little extra attention to detail. So you get a five foot long USB A to C cable. This is a USB C charge port, obviously. It's a 2022 headset, um, and it will work while you charge it. You cannot use it as a wired USB headset. You have to use the wireless dongle. Uh, that's literally there just for power. And then, like I said, you have your five foot aux cable. Now on that note with the TRRS cord, um, the headset does not need to be turned on to use this. It can be turned on and I'll explain the differences later, um, but this will work in passive mode as well. And then of course you get the new light speed transmitter. This is a pretty sweet transmitter because you can see it has that little button on it. When you plug this in, so this is the Xbox version. When you plug that in, if the LED is white, you are in PC mode. So you'll get your dual game and voice chat uh, options, which I'll again dive into more. But if you tap the button, it switches to green. Green puts it in Xbox mode and that's what you'll need to wirelessly connect on that console. Now on the note of the USB mode, so this is the only headset that I've used that had a USB toggle that did not work properly on PlayStation. Now obviously they advertise that you can buy a PlayStation dongle separately, but I'm wondering if they do some weird things to force that issue because in USB mode, the light turns white. On PlayStation, this headset, this Xbox headset, gets detected as the Astro A30. The microphone also gets detected and I was able to use voice chat, party chat, all of that worked totally fine on PlayStation. So I have chat, I have two-way communication so I can hear people, and I did get game audio. The only issue is for some reason on PlayStation, the volume is stuck on the headset at about 10%. I can actually adjust the volume on PlayStation. So it lets me turn the volume up and down, but this headset is stuck at a low volume. So I don't know if they did something intentionally to make it so you had to purchase a dongle because the two-way communication is there for game and chat. I don't know if it's because this has a dual driver, meaning that there's a game 
output and a chat output, and that's causing a conflict on PlayStation. So I'm not trying to accuse Astro of anything, but it is interesting because I've never seen it do that on any headset. I have about 80 headsets right now, and not one USB headset has ever had that volume lock issue if I got connection to the console. So now it's time to talk about specs. And the Astro rates this at a 27 hour battery life. And depending on what headset you're upgrading from, that may be a nice improvement. Compared to what currently has been released, this is a little bit on the lower side, but not by much. Most gaming headsets are rated between 30 and 40 hours now for this type of price point and generation. That includes the Razer Barracudas, the Sony Enzones, uh, Inzones, um, Turtle Beach Stealth 700 Gen 2. Those are all about 40 hour headsets. Uh, EPOS is 30 hours, but you get the idea. Now, I the, one of the reasons why this review took a few days is I do a lot of battery rundown as well, just to validate that things are up on the up and up. Um, I did get about 30 hours, about th almost 31 hours of battery life on a single charge, which was great. I exceeded what they rated uh, officially, and that included a use of Wi-Fi or wireless connection and Bluetooth, because when you turn this on, Bluetooth is on by default. Now, Astro doesn't officially state that this does quick charging or rapid charging. However, I did test that anyway. So uh, in my testing with a very powerful USB charger, it could do up to 100 watts. So I knew that wouldn't be an issue. Um, a 20 minute charge got me an additional 19% of battery life, which equates to about five hours. So a 20 minute charge can give you about an additional five hours of playtime. Now that is close to the competitors that do officially advertise rapid charging like the Stealth and the new Nova series. Um, it's up there and I think that's still more than enough. And like I said, if for any reason it's dead, you can charge it while you play with the cable or you can use it as aux, however you wanna do it. Now the A30 comes with 40 millimeter drivers, which should be familiar if you've ever used, you know, Steel Series or any of the older Astros. So that hasn't changed. Uh, but the driver sensitivity is 105 decibel sensitivity rating, which is excellent. And one of my nitpicks on the prior Nova review is that the drivers weren't as sensitive, which can really hurt you in aux mode. So um, I like that they're very sensitive, very easy to drive. And as a result, this headset gets very loud. You get a lot of volume out of it. Now getting into Bluetooth, this is SBC codec only, no fancy codecs for AppDex or AAC, pretty normal for a gaming headset. Uh, but what I love about this is it's simultaneous Bluetooth. And what that means is it's not just uh, keeping a connection to your phone, for example, but you can listen to both your phone and your wireless dongle audio source at the exact same time. So you don't have to worry about uh, going back and forth like you do with the Razer or the EPOS. Everything's mixed. Now, the other big win is the microphone also works simultaneously with both. And when the microphone is active on the Bluetooth side, it does not reduce your volume on the game side. The Stell 700 has excellent simultaneous Bluetooth audio but when you have an active mic call on the Bluetooth side, it reduces your game volume a little bit. So I love that this took the Nova approach from SteelSeries, meaning that with both those headsets, the volume is sent full volume on both at the same time. Lucid Sound does that on a couple models as well, but that is preferred because you at least have the option. Now you can control the Bluetooth volume separately on your phone, and if you max out the volume on your phone, it will not exceed the master volume setting on the headset. So if this volume is set to 50% and your phone's at 100, you're still only hear the Bluetooth audio at 50%. Now the Bluetooth performance was excellent. Every time I turned on the headset, it instantly paired to my phone. I'm talking within a second of turning on. The only other headset that was consistently performing this well on Bluetooth was my Corsair Virtuoso XT, which is an even more expensive headset. So uh, Bluetooth performance was excellent. And on that note of wireless signal, this dongle has been amazing as well. That was a concern of mine because in the past on wireless, I've had some issues with different generations of the Astro A50s. Lots of wireless dropouts, conflict with my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, same issues I had with the Penrose. Not the case with this one. This transmitter is a top performer. I wouldn't say it's class leading compared to like the Nova Pro Wireless, which has that external base, um, but I was able to consistently go 35 to 40 feet away from this transmitter through two walls. And in between me and this transmitter, it was a wireless access point, also broadcasting at 2.4 and five gigahertz. So that was a normal household type range. So whether you are going to the bathroom and you wanna still hear the game or the chat, or you want them to hear you, 
you could still do that no problem. And I didn't have any issues. I did this multiple times and it worked fine every single time. So let's talk about build quality, comfort, style. First off, the style. This is very different than every other Astro headset I've ever owned and used. And I'll show you a couple uh, towards the end of the review. But look at this finish. It has this like iridescent, almost like a Damascus type finish to it. This, is, this has a removable speaker tag or speaker plate, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uses magnets. They, they're going to eventually sell different ones. You can always customize this one and put it back on. But man, I love the way it looks even without the plate. I think it's just absolutely stunning. Uh, and it's different. And I actually like that it's not RGB because one, I'm never going to see it when I'm wearing it. Two, RGB drains your battery. So I like the fact that there's less of that and more focus on just a really good aesthetic, whether it's on or off. Now, another improvement I noticed with this on build quality is it's very quiet. Uh, some headsets, they rattle, they creak just a little bit. You move these around and it sounds like a cheaper plastic. Even though this is pretty much all plastic, they did a really good job at making everything kind of well buttoned down. I can do really big twists, no squeaks. There's little rubber stops, so I can move this. You can't hear anything. Um, it's just really, really well made in that regard. And they use magnets in a couple spots. I mentioned the speaker tag. The ear pads also attach via a magnet. Now this removable pad, this is leatherette, I'll talk about that impact in a moment, um, but there are no replaceable pads yet. More will be coming out, and even though these have a similar shape to the A40s with the Velour, um, the A40 pads do not fit. So I'm sure we will see more later. These are just slightly smaller than the A40s. Um, so a little bit tighter on the ear from front to back. Now a couple other things I like, the headband's clean. It doesn't really, you know, it's not a game breaker. I don't mind that every headset doesn't have that rub, you know, that stretchable band, like the ski goggle band type stuff. I always call it something different. Um, this is just a rubber uh, headband with a pad. And the padding kind of stops as it gets closer to the end because they're reinforcing it for the headband. Um, comfort wise, it was actually pretty good. I didn't have any issues with it. I'll talk about clamp force soon, but even when you slide this in and out, so this is a different design again than what you typically get on the other Astro headsets. You have these telescoping bands, single mount point, but it's really, really solid, almost too solid. And I'll talk about how that affects sound quality after, but I do like the way this is built and it felt great on my head. Now clamp force is on the medium to, I guess, slightly medium strong side. It's it's a little bit stronger of a clamp than the Nova series. This is almost identical in clamp force to the Astro A40 and the new Razer Barracudas. The Turtle Beach headsets have a stronger clamp than this. The Corsairs and Steel Series headsets have a slightly softer clamp depending on the model. The, no the new Novas are slightly lighter than this. Older Steel Series, some of them are stronger. And I want to talk about a couple things with the pad because I have some cool stuff I want to start doing in my reviews. So this is a Leatherette pad. Leatherette has a really nice seal. Typically it sounds better than most other pad materials or real leather will. Um, it's just, it has really good sonic properties to it. And by having a proper seal, you get proper base extension and you block out other noise around you better. So the athletic fabric stuff, it breathes better. It's more comfortable for long gaming sessions, lower heat, for example, whereas this can get a little bit warmer, but at the um, benefit of gaining a better sound profile. Now, I wanna talk about the way this pad compresses. So I'm doing plexiglass now because let's see if I can get this well in the video and you can see that it's gonna change. Let me get make sure the angle. So light clamp, this is what I was talking about. So you can see that as the pad compresses, it shrinks a little bit. It's not the biggest pad. So once you put it on, you are going to feel just a little bit of pressure behind your ears. If the clamp was too strong, you can see how the, uh, the pad changes shape. Not as big of a pad opening as other headsets in this price range. Um, not the smallest either. Now, if I had to nitpick anything about the comfort, the rotation is great. It's just a little bit on the stiffer side. Um, if I can do that and it doesn't fall right away, it's just got a little bit extra resistance to it. Not a big deal, but if I turn this slightly and then put it on, it doesn't conform to my head. So as you put it on, you kind of have to make sure you dial it in every single time to get nice even distribution of pressure. Now I'm gonna hone in on something that was probably the most important thing to me with this headset, and it's not what you'd think. It's the controls, because Astro to me has had the most legendary, some of the best controls of headsets for adjusting sound, muting yourself, game to chat mix, etc. They were like, they set the standard at every price range. The Astro A20 has the volume rocker with a button above and below it to change your game to chat mix. 
The A40s has the best wired DAC I've ever used because you have a nice fat volume knob, the game to chat knob, super easy to read and use, and it was stable. Then you get the Astro A50 that had that incredible tap system, tap up and down for your volume, forward back for your game chat. It was just so easy to dial in, and I love controls because we live with these headsets every day. So if you're in Gulag and your friends are fighting and screaming over who took someone's satchel in Warzone and you need to turn them down, or you have a quiet friend and you're driving a car and you can't hear them, or your dog starts barking when your friends are trying to figure out where those rogue footsteps are coming from, these controls make a massive difference on your experience for gaming. And it's something that to me has been like a legendary benefit of Astro. If you've owned any of those, I'm sure you can appreciate where I'm coming from with this. So you can imagine my dismay when I looked and could not find such legendary controls. Instead, I have that. This little, tiny little joystick that does everything from volume to game to chat mix. Kind of like when I got a new flat screen TV and the buttons went away and now it's a joystick. And I was like, are you kidding me? I can't do anything anymore. Um, so I was upset at first, and I'm gonna get into something more positive here, but you can tell that was a big letdown. Then, where is my damn flip to mute? The Astro A20 had it, the Astro A50 had it, and it's like, someone comes in the room, your dog barks, bam, flip the mute. It's my favorite thing about gaming headsets on the microphone side. So I'm like, okay, is it a push button? Is it a tap, like what Lucid does? It's this tiny little switch. You can see a theme here. Why is it so tiny? The switch is actually very stiff too, at least on this motion where I'm showing you this. It has a lot of resistance to it and it's tiny. Then the power and Bluetooth buttons, I don't really care that they're small. Power, you don't want to turn it off accidentally. And then Bluetooth, um, that's for your audio controls, you know, changing tracks, play pause. You can actually do your assistant for Siri and Google and all that. I started using it and I was admittedly, I was going to be pretty upset if it didn't work well. Um, it's not the best controls I've used, but it is much better than I expected to. So there is a clear delineation of left and right versus up and down, and I did not think they would pull that off in such a small joystick. Maybe it could have been better with a larger joystick, I have no idea. Um, but I'm, I, I actually was able to adjust not much slower than the Astro A50 method, which has been my favorite wireless gaming headset for adjusting, because like you go to Gulag, two taps towards game, you jump back out after you win, of course, because you're wearing a good headset, tap back out to game, and now you can hear your, or to chat, and you can hear your friends again. So this did a very good job, and the volume up down each click is 5%. Up down, you can hold it, and it'll slowly bring it all the way up, all the way down. And on your left and right, if you hold it, it'll go all the way from left to right. And there's these really funky chimes and noises it makes to tell you where you're going. I'll play those sounds in a minute because it's hilarious. And then the midpoint has an audible tone as well. Mic mute has an audible tone. I'm not a huge fan of the switch. It's okay. I can still do it pretty quickly. Um, you can see I'm flicking it as I go. And every now and then I get a slight miss. That's what it is. Um, mic mute is the up. So it's not like flipping the switch up turns your mic on. It turns on the mute. So up is muted, down is off. Just interesting things like that. And on that note, this little red color, depending on the lighting in your room, it kind of catches your eye a little bit. It's like a dark boom, then it's red spot. So if you get worried about distractions, just tuck it a little bit lower. At least it bends enough. All right, so I want to talk about Aux briefly because this was a much bigger win than I was anticipating. So I mentioned how it works wirelessly simultaneously with Bluetooth and your console or PC. The Aux works at the same time of both of those. So you can combine three sources at once. The only headset I've ever used that's done that is the Corsair Virtuoso. RGB XT, which has an incredible microphone, but not anywhere close to this sound quality, which is getting us closer to where I'm going. The reason why I bring up aux and sound quality, in passive mode, this headset being off with aux, it still sounds incredible. So even if you can't benefit from any custom EQ work, they tune this so well from a physical side, you can literally just plug and play with everything and still get a really good sound. That's a huge, huge win because you're not getting punished for using the aux cord. Now when the headset is off, it's going to play the volume of the aux at whatever volume it comes in at. So if this headset's off and I plug into my PlayStation and set my PlayStation to max volume, this is gonna be max volume. As soon as I turn this headset on, it will then intercept the aux signal and I can control the volume from the headset as well as a master volume. That way you're adjusting both. 
it's an interesting quirk, but I like, I, honestly, it's just extremely versatile. So I think that's the best way to possibly do it. All right, now I'm talking to you on the Astro A30 microphone. Now this is using the boom mic. I'm also connected to the Astro slash Logitech G app. Uh, this is basically allowing me to set my noise gate. Right now the noise gate is off, so this is its purest form. Um, I'm gonna type on this keyboard and you can hear the way the background noise rejection sounds like. That's the Vulcan uh, 2 Mini with the uh, Titan 2 optical switches. So I'm gonna set the uh, booms noise gate to high. This is the maximum noise rejection. So there's a little bit coming in every now and then, but it's much more subtle. Uh, so, and it doesn't really affect my voice quality too much. So mess around with that. If you're speaking quietly, then yeah, you'd probably want to have the noise rejection set to off or low, um, but it does a decent job at blocking it out. Now, one thing I like about the Logitech G app is you can adjust the side tone for each mic. There are two microphones on this headset. Um, the side tone quality is okay. This mic is very sensitive to plosives. So if it's too close to your mouth with this little hole on it, um, you'll get that sound. Uh, it'll pick that up. So don't bring it too close to your mouth. So I'm gonna remove this mic and then I'll talk to you on the integrated mic. So this is kind of crazy because I actually think the sound quality is better on this little pinhole mic. It just sounds a little bit warmer. It's partly because it's picking up the bass from my skull, which is at what's adding some of that warmth. Now the downside to an integrated mic, you would think, well, why do I even need this? Is the noise rejection is terrible on an integrated mic because it's not close to your mouth. You don't get that proximity effect. So when I type on a keyboard like this, it picks up a lot more background noise. Now I can enable the noise cancellation on max and let's just do that now and set it to high. Still picks up much more than the boom mic. It helps address it. So for the integrated mic, if you need to use it, I would pretty much suggest leaving the noise suppression on medium to high unless you're dead quiet and you just don't want to deal with seeing a boom in front of your face. Uh, but that's what the two mics sound like. Now I'm going to show you Bluetooth and aux. All right, now I'm talking to you on the Astro A30 in Bluetooth mode using the boom. Uh, again, the noise rejection is set to, if I go back to the app, right now the noise rejection is on high, so I'm going to switch it back to off. And this is what the mic sounds like with the noise rejection off. It's very, very similar. Um, it's actually a little bit more sensitive on Bluetooth, but the quality is more poor. Um, there's obviously a lot of compression and honestly a little bit of artifacting. Not the best sounding microphone, but this is what it sounds like in Bluetooth mode. So let's switch to the internal mic. And now you can see on the internal mic, which again, a similar idea to before. The Bluetooth signal is altering the sound of both. Um, more background noise pickup on this. However, I think it's still, um, it sounds okay. Uh, if anything, it might again be better than the boom. And if I turn the noise gate, so now the noise gate's back off and this is about as open as it sounds on Bluetooth. Background noise, I'm gonna turn the keyboard or the noise rejection on while I'm typing. So it's gonna go from off to high and then back off. So that's what the mic sounds like in Bluetooth. All right, now I'm talking to you on the Astro A30 in aux mode, which naturally is going to sound the best because the microphone itself isn't terrible. It's just not great. And then combined with the wireless transmitters having limited uh, bandwidth, they put more on the output side for sound quality and less so on the mic. That makes it sound worse. This is what it sounds like in aux form. So if you're plugging into a controller, it will sound better this way. Now I'm gonna to switch to the internal mic. And this is what I sound like using the mic built into the headset. Again, similar ideas before. You're just, you know, the connection's obviously changing how they both sound as a whole. Uh, but this one has much more noise background pickup, if you will. Uh, but overall, not a bad sound quality itself. All right, now it's time to talk about sound quality. And I'm about to drop a bombshell. To a lot of people, the A30 is going to sound better than the A40s and the A50s. Yep. It is a great sounding headset, and I didn't expect it to sound as good as it did. I was a little nervous, but the A20 Gen 2s, aside from the comfort and mic issues, had great sound too. So, um, you know, I was kind of didn't know what to expect. I was just hoping for the best, and honestly, I think at this price range, they knocked it out of the park for a couple of reasons. So, um, the, I mentioned the benefits of the leatherette pads. Because of that, 
This has better bass extension at lower frequencies. So um, the A40s and A50s, I, like as the last couple generations came out, they didn't have the same bass in dynamics that the older ones did. And this kind of brought that back. The bass is more powerful, it's clean, it's still very tight, very clear sounding bass. It's not muddy or boomy, and it's actually not affecting the mid-range either because it's not overly emphasized. So your vocals actually sound pretty nice. Now as you get into the mid to upper mids, um, like one to 2000 hertz, um, it's recessed just slightly. What that means is if you're using this for like critical music listening, the vocals might sound like they take just a little bit of a step back, not because the bass is so overpowering and the highs are so sharp or anything like that. It's just a softer presentation. Now when you get into the highs, this doesn't have an overly bright sound. This does have a brighter sound than the Astro A40s and 50s, so it, which is adding a little bit more sparkle up top. So if you like just a little bit more detail, a little bit more clarity in the upper frequencies, I, I, using clarity to describe treble is probably not the most accurate way to do this, but to a lot of people, having a little bit sharper sounding audio can sound like it has more detail to them, that you often associate the two together. Um, this still has amazing clarity, but it does just have a little bit more treble and a little bit more bass compared to the A40s and 50s. Gaming performance is excellent. Does it have the sound stage of the Nova Pros or the VZR Model 1s? No, um, those are better in terms of expanding your stereo imaging. So if you're trying to place an object, it's one thing to know exactly, is it 30 degrees to my left or right or behind me? That's your imaging. Your sound stage is how far is your perception of that object. And I don't think these have quite as open of a sound stage but for when I play games a lot lately, especially being a dad and working on the YouTube channel at night, day job during the day, I'm more concerned about comfort and controls. And I love the way this sound profile is because it's a little bit more relaxed than some of my other headsets. Um, and I'm comparing it mainly to the Novas. I've praised the Novas for their imaging and game performance, especially in FPS. They're just insane, but they are shouty. So if you ever owned a Nova, recently, or you've bought both, I'm sure you notice this has better bass, it sounds warmer, it sounds fuller. The Novas are like, let's go! You know, it's like they're yelling at you, like, you gotta get in the game, it's cupping their, you know, hands around their mouth, shouting certain frequencies at you, and it can be a little fatiguing, that's why my EQ tunes on those kind of pull that down. Um, whereas this, you can almost just plug it in and go. So I really, really love the sound, and to explain my testing methodology, I play games for a while initially. I listen to the same songs with like six headsets in the same price range over and over. Songs I'm familiar with for hours to see if I can spot differences in every headset. Uh, and then I do my, uh, and then I have game recordings. So I'm playing the same exact game track to see how it affects imaging, footsteps, engine sounds, virtual environments, you know, like forests, stuff like that. Uh, and then of course is the objective measurement on my headphone measuring rig. So these do an exceptional job. I think a lot of people are gonna love it, um, but they give you the option to EQ via Bluetooth. Okay, so um, out of the box, I don't know what EQ mode you're going to hear. Mine defaulted in footsteps mode, which I was like, this does not sound that great. I was getting pretty nervous. So I installed the app and this is what it looks like. Now, for surprisingly, mine shows the white headset, not the blue. So I don't know if it's just picked randomly or if there's some identifier issue. Uh, but either way, so you can see it says Equalizer Custom. That would mean I customized it, right? No, that's because I've been trying to get this EQ to apply since I got it, and I cannot customize the sound of this to save my life. I've tried everything, and I think it's a bug specific to iOS. Now, Astro knows about this. They're gonna come out with an update down the road that will fix this, so I will likely do a follow-up review, but I'm just trying to be honest and upfront. Don't get this and expect you can just EQ it to your liking right off the bat. You can't. So none of these EQs, and this looks cool. You know, I like, it's a five band, so it's very limiting. Um, but one thing I didn't understand is it shows 64 Hertz, 128, 256, 512 Hertz, and then 1000 Hertz. That is not where the issue is. The issue starts at 1000, but all the EQ issues I have with this headset are actually in the treble range. So I hope that when they fix this app, they change the band configuration because I wouldn't even care to touch the bass, to be honest, it's almost perfect. Uh, for gaming, because it's not too boomy, but it sounds amazing. So, you get two modes, and when this headset is connected via USB to your console or computer, it defaults to footsteps mode. 
uh, which greatly cuts back the bass. I'm showing you the frequency response of that bass line. It drops dramatically and it also increases the treble, which makes it sound a little bit sharper, not to my liking. Um, it's kind of like a Nova shout, but without any of the benefits. So the footstep mode drastically reduces bass, not really to my liking, because I'm not like a bass head, but you don't need to get rid of all your bass to still hear footsteps. A high quality headset on a decently programmed game engine will still hear footsteps. So I wasn't a huge fan of this. Immersive boosts the bass a bit, and the highs are still nice, but it's not as emphasized as footsteps. So to me, I just set my game mode to immersive, and when I go back, you can see profiles right here. If I'm connected to my phone as the, my primary source and I'm just listening to music, it'll go to media mode and that can have its own EQ setting too. So I just set both to be immersive and I'm happy with it right now. Even though I want to custom EQ it, uh, I think most people will plug that in and actually quite enjoy the sound. So on the note, here is the app. This is what it works, uh, looks like. So there's a couple of things I noticed after using it for a while that I wanted to mention. I think I mentioned this in the beginning, but just to be clear, if you are a Mac gamer, this is an amazing headset to get because not only does it just work out of the box without needing any special EQ, eventually, of course, you can do it with mobile, um, but because the game and chat mix is built into the transmitter, you can have game and chat mix on Mac. I tested it on my MacBook and it works perfectly fine. No special software needed. One of the drawbacks of the Nova series, which has game to chat mix, is it requires sonar for that to work, which means all the Mac gamers can't benefit from half the features that the PC players get. You are not being limited in any way, whether you use Bluetooth, Mac, either console, and even on USB PC mode, it'll work on a Nintendo Switch as well. As far as a couple other bugs went besides the software, I had one instance in the past three days where I got a email notification from my phone via Bluetooth, it beeped on my headset, and I was listening to music at the time at, let's say, 50% volume. Once the notification chime went away on my headset, the headset went to max volume instantly as soon as the chime was done, and it blasted music. And this thing gets crazy loud. Not a huge fan of that. I tried forcing that to do that again because I was like, I hope this doesn't always happen. It never did it again after that, but it was an interesting bug. So you may see that get addressed in firmware down the road, but if it happens to you, Either let me know or hopefully it gets fixed soon. And then the last interesting quirk is the tones. It makes some weird sounds. It's not like just a single beep or something. It's almost like they stuck a Mario game in it. So I'm gonna pause myself for a moment. I'm gonna play some tones so you can hear what I'm talking about. Now I'm going to try to do this part as quickly as possible because this video is crazy long. I wanted to talk about competitors. Uh, I'm going to be straight. $230, a little bit more expensive for some of the features you get when you compare it to the Nova 7. The Nova 7 is $180 versus $230. So for $50 less, you get a headset that I think wears better for longer game periods. Uh, it's a little bit more comfortable. You get a brighter, shoutier soundstage, but you lose some of the bass and immersion. So if you want an explosion to be like, you know, with this one, you're like, oh, I just heard an explosion over there. But this one, it's like, hell yeah, that was an explosion. That's the difference in the bass response. The Sony doesn't have any of that sub bass rumble, but it's really, really boomy in the upper bass. So if you play a lot of racing games on PlayStation or you want to have the game to chat mix for PlayStation controlled via your headset, you have to buy an in zone headset or the Pulse, which I do not recommend. Uh, other than that, I don't think this is good, or I, I would not take this over the 830 because the 830 sounds better, um, and to me it just it works as a better headset. The mic on the Sony is pr pretty terrible as well. Now, if you're a bass head, you want the strongest bass possible, you like the battery life, this is $200, it's the Stealth 700 Gen 2. Um, different aesthetic, huge pads, um, good for glasses, surprisingly, but overall it's okay. Um, I think it's fun and I've been using this one for a long time. It has the game to chat mix, simultaneous Bluetooth, not great for Discord calls at the same time you're playing on console, but for 200 bucks it works on all platforms with everything included. If you buy the Xbox version, you don't have to buy anything extra. So it's cheaper, no carrying case, 
more bass, and even though the app doesn't look great, it works extremely well. Then you get into the Barracudas, which was an interesting one, because this Barracuda, it might be only 160. Even if it's 180, it's still significantly less. And if you're primarily using this on PC and travel, like just for music listening, the Bluetooth app for customizing your sound is incredible on the new Razer. So you have, oh, I think it's eight or 10 bands. Um, it's very easy to dial into the sound, the sound that you like, and they sound excellent for music. These have these soft athletic fabrics, so these are very comfortable. The microphone's not great, um, unfortunately. It had the same, I think it's worse than the Astro, to be honest. Microphones aren't great and they don't work on Xbox unless you use the auxiliary cord. This is the interesting one though. The Barracuda Pro is $20 more than the Astro A30. Has active noise cancellation. It sounds amazing. Um, it doesn't. It has a little bump in the middle, but not like the Novas. And this baffle is padded, so it's actually extremely comfortable. If you're using this stuff on the go a lot, the Razer also comes with a case, even though it's a little bit bigger. But this has one of the best active noise cancellation I've heard on any gaming headset, period, of any price range. So it blocks background noise out great. It's great for music. It's really good for gaming, with exception of the microphone and the lack of game to chat mix. It's literally just a headset uh, with basic mic controls. That's why I wanted to show you all this because when you start comparing it and you really start breaking down the feature set, this is honestly a really compelling option. I think the 830 is going to be one of the better choices for the holiday season of 2022. It's definitely going to be in my top five roundups. Um, I hope you found this review helpful. I went off into a lot of detail and I'm sure I missed some things. These are actually not bad for glasses. I know I missed that. Um, so if you wear glasses, they're okay. I think the Novas are better for glasses. Um, but yeah, it's solid. I, I can't imagine too many people being dissatisfied with it, um, especially once they fix the app and add more features to that. It's only gonna get better from here and it's already been fun. The only real drawback to me was the microphone. If that's not a deal breaker to you, you're gonna have a good time with it. So anyway, you made it to the end. Thank you so much for the support. Thanks for making it to the end. You could have watched half a movie at this point, I feel. Uh, but don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, I'm trying to grow, grow the channel and I appreciate all the support you guys and gals have given me. With that being said, I will see you next time.